Let's dive into BPR filters a little bit and we're gonna start with some housekeeping. So like we mentioned before, if you hit this BPR button, that's gonna do a best preview render and you're gonna notice in this instance, it's gonna kind of warble things so you might not know what's happening here. And essentially, if you're just JoinX now, what we did was go into this project and then load up this Cartoon Render 02 here. So the Cartoon Render 02 set up our materials in a way that gave them a very cell shaded look. However, when we hit BPR render, this is the result that we're getting. If we grab the render menu, and again, if you just double click these little side docking stations over here to open them up and then you can grab a render menu over here. If you go all the way down to where it says BPR filters, you can open up that menu. And you're gonna say we have two of them on. And if you go through and you click them, you're gonna see this one's set to sharpen, this one's set to displace. Now they have these little circles here. So if you touch those on and off, it's going to turn that filter on and off. So with both of these off, no BPR filters are available to us and all these options are grayed out. However, if we take this first one and we turn it on, now sharpen is applied to our object. And you see if we turn that on and off, it applies it real time in our viewport. Now you can see that it's been sharpened. Now, however, if we touch this, it's gonna go out of BPR mode or best preview mode, and it's gonna get rid of that filter. So again, in order for these filters to be visible, you have to hit BPR and it has to be rendered. Now, the good news is after you've hit BPR, you can play with these all you want. So for example, the sharpen here, you can click and drag this. And like I mentioned earlier in a, another video, if you hold down shift and drag these sliders, you'll get a real time update. Now for sharpen, if you drag it all the way to the left, you'll get blurry and you drag it all the way to right, you'll obviously get sharper. And in essence, that's the basics of the BPR filter system is you have BPR filters, you hit BPR, you render it, and then you can stack these filters. You can blend them together with different blend modes, just like in Photoshop. You can turn them on and off. You can make them more or less sharp. You've got all of these options down here and it's all happening real time in your viewport here. Now, earlier we had a displace filter applied. If we go over here and we just turn that on, now you're going to see F2. It's not selected, so we're still on the sharpen filter, but we are able to turn off that displace filter. And what displace is doing, and we'll get to this more, is kind of warping those edges. If we click on it, you're going to see the filter is set to displace, blend mode is set to replace, and the displace values are all dialed in here. However, if we go over here and turn off sharpen, you're going to see it kind of gets a little bit blurrier because that sharpen is no longer applied. So essentially you can turn on and off these filters and they're gonna stack linearly from left to right or from F1 to F12. Now, before we dive super deep into filters and options, let's go ahead and talk about a little bit of housekeeping and kind of stay up here in this top part of the menu. Uh, if you go over here, you can see we have a copy, paste, cut, and insert. And that's pretty self-explanatory. If we want to, we can like say copy the sharper filter. We can go over here to F3 and we can paste. And now we have another sharpen filter in F3. So we're kind of doing a double sharpen. So now we have sharpen, displace, and then sharpen. However, if we want to, we can actually cut that sharpen filter. We can choose F2 and we can do insert. So now we have sharpen, sharpen, displace. And if we want to double up this displace, we can go, for example, copy, select F4, paste, and then it'll just paste over what was ever in F4. So now we're getting two displace options. Again, you can turn that on and off as needed. Now let's say you like the look that you've got going here and you want to save this. You can save your filter settings here by just going up here to save and you can save a BPR filter set as ZRP. Now if I hit cancel and I hit the comma key, you're going to see there's filters and there's render sets we can bring in. They're both essentially the same thing. You're going to see when we go to filters, that's a ZRP file. If we go to render set, that's also a ZRP file. The difference would be if you went over here to BPR filters and you did Lightbox filter, that's going to go to the filters area. And if you double click any of these, let's say we want to do like black and white anime 02, you can double click those. It's going to load those filter settings. However, if we scroll up here, you're going to see there are render settings you can load. So you can load a render set or you can go down here to your filters and you can load a filter set essentially. Render sets are gonna contain all the render settings that you have up here. So anything you were dealing with previously, like when we were setting up our shadow properties, basically, honestly, it's everything in your render menu is what a render set is. So think of it as like a in a hierarchy term, your render set's gonna be your rendering settings plus your filter settings. Your filters are just gonna be your filter settings, but make sure you load them in with this filter menu. And the easiest way to do that is with this light box filter. So when I do that, or you hit the comma key, and you go over here to your filter menu, that's gonna be your filter sets. If again, if you have these BPR filters that you really, really like, you can go over here and you can click save. And if you want them to show up in your light box, make sure you go to your ZBrush uh, program files, Pixelogic ZBrush 2019. This is on a PC, I'm not sure where it is on a Mac. And you may be saying, oh, where's Z filters? You can see there's uh, you know render sets in here. And incidentally, if you did wanna save any brushes that you wanna load in 
through the light box or anything you want to load in through light box. This is essentially where we're going to find that location. But you're going to see there is no Z filters in here. You only have Z render presets. If you hit cancel, you're going to see under filters, if you click on any one of these, you're going to see that location is render presets. And if you go to render sets, you're going to see that location is render presets. So again, it doesn't matter if you save out a render set or a VPR filter, they're both essentially the same thing. It's how you load them that's going to dictate if it's going to override just your filters or your render settings and your filters. So probably the best thing to do is go up here and you can save a render preset in the ZBrush 2019. ZBrush render presets, go ahead and name it. And then again, when you hit the comma key, that'll be pulled up into your render sets. If you want to load in everything, you can just double click these like we did earlier and you can load in all the render settings. And when you load it from the render set, it'll load in the render settings, the BPR filters. If you go in through the BPR filter area and you load up those settings, it's just going to change your filter settings. So if we want to, we can do this black and white anime 03 and you're going to see it's just going to change these filters on the fly. And uh, this black and white anime 01 is pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the comma key so we can see uh, the result that we're getting. And uh, that's totally cool. You can see the shadows here have lines in them and we're going to get to how to do that in just a bit. There's one more thing I want to cover, and that is when we were talking about loading and saving BPR filters and loading them in from the light box, you're going to see there's also an option for loading from project. So when you go up here to File, Save As, you're going to by default save a ZPR, which is a Z project. Now, if you remember when we hit the comma key earlier and we went into the project tab and we went into demo projects, you're going to see these ZPRs will completely overwrite everything you have loaded. So let's say you have a really cool render setup and you don't want to ruin that. You just want to load this tool in. You're going to see over here in your tool menu, there is now a load tool from project. So that way you can just grab that active tool out of that Z project and just load it in without it overriding everything you have. Another thing you can do is let's say you have tools loaded and you want to load in the render settings from a specific project. Instead of going from the light box, you can go to a project you have saved. You can go file open or you don't want to do file open to a project. What you want to do if you want to load in from a project, just go over here to load from project and that'll load the render settings from that project. And even down here in the BPR filters, you can load the BPR filters from an, uh, from a project that you specify. Now, let's say you just want to open a Z project, but you want to keep your cool render settings that you have. If you want to, you can go over here to BPR filters and you can click on freeze and that will freeze these BPR filters. So any project you open, it'll go ahead and disregard that project that you're bringing in or that you're opening that'll disregard the filter settings and keep the ones you have. You're going to see up here we also have another render. There is a render freeze and you're going to see this is going to gray this out because this one again that hierarchy system that I was talking about uh, it will already freeze your BPR filters by default. So if you just do render freeze that's going to save all of your or it's going to freeze your current render and BPR filter settings and then load in the Z project. You can use that to kind of juggle Z projects and your settings. And one last thing, if you uh, hit the comma key, if you do save any of these uh, render settings as, as a render set, it'll just use your document as the thumbnail. So when you hit the comma key and you go in here to your render set or your filters, that's what you're going to see as your thumbnail.